G'day, welcome to a new video. Today is gonna to be all about watering. Watering your lawn is super, super important, especially to get through the heat of summer, no matter where you are in the world. So I'm gonna to talk to you about what I do to keep the moisture on my lawn to keep it healthy, even though right now I need to retreat for that fungal disease. And also talk to you about something I've tried which didn't work for me. Hopefully give you some tips, some ideas, and some things for you to think about to work on for your lawn. So let's get stuck into it. So watering your lawn in general, you wanna train your lawn to only be taking or needing water kind of once a week through the main growing season, through the main heat of wherever you are. It can depend and vary if you've got a cool season grass type, if you're in the US and places like that, you probably need a bit more water than that to get through. But for me, a warm season grass type, in a warmer sort of climate, I'm aiming for once a week to train the root system to grow deeper and stronger down in search of water to become healthier and stronger. And now a big consideration for me, especially on a 500 square meter lawn now, is that I am making sure that as much water as possible gets to where it needs to go and it's not wasted. Sometimes you see sprinkler setups where there's heaps of water going onto driveways or titting sheds or fences or whatever it may be. For me, to be absolutely exact, I've got 489 square meters. So I wanna try and minimize how much water, or I wanna maximize, how much water is coming out of sprinklers or out of hoses and actually hitting that 489 meter squared. So for starters, my main sprinkler that covers the most area is this Gardena circular sprinkler. Now this can go in a full circle. I set it up to do a 180 and cover this area of the yard. So I've got one tap that comes off the shed there and I've got one tap down the side of the house where I've joined two hoses together to reach this back section. So this sprinkler over sprays a little bit over there and hits a couple of fruit trees which i'm not too fussed about and it does over spray a little bit into that back or into that side garden bed but in terms of the curvature of the back there or that angle off the back fence it covers most of the ground it will spray and cover around to about here which is where this impact sprinkler down here comes in So with this handy hose link feature, I can turn it on from there. So you can see there, that's just slightly, or just was slightly over spraying a little bit on that longer cycle. And then this is going to spray around. And hopefully you can see that not too bad there, but it's just, just about matching up. This sprinkler here is pretty much getting right up into that corner. It's covering everything the circular sprinkler doesn't. I'm getting a little bit of this getting a little bit of this spray that goes onto this fence here, but for the most part, this is pretty much hitting grass. That one's hitting 96% grass, I reckon, like pretty good coverage. Now I need to move, it's gonna get wet. So the next one I've got here is this Nilex oscillating sprinkler. Let me turn it on. So as you can see here, the way this works, these oscillating sprinklers are really, really good if you've got a square or rectangular sort of yard. So this is coming all the way back over to about here, which is approximately where my circular sprinkler meets up. With some oscillating sprinklers like this, you can adjust the distance to how wide they throw the water as well as the distance. So this one, I can make it if I wanted to just go up in one straight line or just shoot out at a certain angle. So you can close it up depending on how wide your space is, how big your yard is, etc. to try and again, make the most of the water. It'd be nice if I had my trees in down the side here for this to be any water that does hit this garden bed to be doing something. But anyway, um, that pretty much probably would normally need to move it just half a meter that way to cover right down to the end there. But I have been hand watering down there just a little bit. And yeah, probably need to turn that sprinkler around just to come and cover this gap a little bit more. But that just comes with some of the, uh, the adjusting you've got to do when you put your sprinklers out day to day. Um, it's where something that I have normally done is I'll mark the ground with either just a tiny bit of spray paint or something like that is a good tip. It's something I haven't been as good at remembering to do um, recently. I'm in my whole recovery of this lawn and uh, after the renovation and looking after it. But that's something that you can do. Just mark a little dot, little X. 
something like that. So you're always going back to the right spot. So anyway, this sprinkler runs for 30 minutes. That one in the back corner I normally put on because it's not covering as big of an area. Normally put that on for about 20 to 25 minutes. It's quite a dry, crappy spot down there as well. So not as much water needed. So after hitting that zone, this oscillating sprinkler comes across to this spot here. I normally click over this thing just a little bit uh, to not be hitting too much water onto that pool fence, be wasted hitting the pool fence, going into the pool, etc. Flick that one on. That one runs for about half an hour as well. There's a look at that oscillating sprinkler, by the way. So there's how you can adjust it to shoot different sorts of angles. Um, and like I said, some you can adjust where how far wide they go to. So yeah, I actually just got this as $5 um, clearance rack at Bunnings. So that was a, a really good pickup. It's been a good sprinkler for me and it fits well for my spaces. So the last spot is over here in this section next to the pool. It's a really awkward sort of spot, obviously. I think across, it's about four meters. Along there is about six, uh, up to the top of that 45 degree there, where yes, I am eventually gonna get the play mulch in there and garden edging. It's gonna happen eventually to block off the kids playground area. Got that many things I wanna do, but anyway. Um, so yeah, generally on the way here, after I finish that main section on the main sprinkler, I'll just hand water this one. Um, now as well, before I get onto my, the next part of this, uh, what I will say is that I have had a lot of comments, particularly on Instagram and things like that. Oh, do this, use these sprinklers, blah, blah, blah. Now, I didn't, I've already spent enough money on this lawn, renovating it and, and all that sort of stuff that I didn't want to go out and buy um, any kind of sprinkler pegs or timers and all different other stuff that you can get when it comes to watering your lawn. Um, I just wanted to use the equipment that I already had. I already owned these sprinklers that one that I just talked about, I got for $5 of clearance rack. Saw that six months ago, it was in winter or something. I was like, oh, that's gonna come in handy. It's only five bucks. So yeah, I didn't wanna go out and be spending lots of money on other things. This setup, yes, it is very manual. Yes, I do have to move sprinklers around. Is it a bit annoying and I wish I didn't have to? Yes, but I'll tell you what, something that I also do not mind when it comes to hand watering and moving sprinklers around is that getting up in the morning, doing that, putting them on, coming out, having a good look at the lawn, particularly when it was recovering from the renovation. If I was just sitting inside with a Bluetooth um, irrigation system and not coming out, looking at the lawn, seeing areas that are struggling, um, you know, being able to look at it consistently to be like, oh, you know what, I can probably start to back off the water or that little patch there, I need to come and hand water that because it's struggling. So that's something that I actually do like about this kind of system where you do, yes, have to get out and get your step count up. Um, and that sort of thing. But yeah, I don't know, might shock some people that um, there are people out there who don't actually mind getting out, having to do a bit of extra work and that sort of thing. So yeah, there's other ways that I could be doing this and I could have been doing this for this season. Next season, I do plan to have water tanks installed and an irrigation system as much as I've just sort of bad mouth having an, an irrigation system. Um, but yeah, this is just what's worked for me. So it's been good. Now, this here is the Holman Traveling Sprinkler. Some people call it a water tractor, something along those lines. It does look pretty cool. Um, it's a really solid um, bit of kit, really solid steel kind of base here that makes up the tractor. The idea of how it works, it's got this little wheel at the front. And the idea is that you sit it on a piece of hose, you turn the water on, you plug it into here, so, so you plug the hose on the end there and then with these you can adjust them when it's going at a perfect 45 and you sort of have to angle them different ways um, and basically the idea is that the power of the water with some sort of motor system in there will propel this forward so it'll actually drive forward spraying the lawn watering the lawn now you can put one down like that and leave one up um, but for now how about i just turn it on for a second Give us a look about how it works.
could see there from those drone shots, like the way that this is designed to work and in theory how it works is pretty cool. Even just now though, this is probably sitting at about five meters from the pool fence and look at the volume of water that is hitting the tiles inside here. So all this completely wasted water. All right, so I've been thinking about making this video for ages and how I was gonna hopefully explain it accurately. So I've got about three, four meters of overspray going into the pool at the moment. That is a waste of water. So I need to bring this up, one, two, three, to approximately there. All right. So now I turn this sprinkler on, it drives forward and all the water is going to be just hitting the grass backwards and forwards, which is great. So now I'm about seven or eight meters forward of that garden bed. It needs to stop seven or eight meters at that end as well. So it's gonna travel for about 10 or 12 meters. Now the problem I had, I turned this on, I used it for the first time and it was moving incredibly slowly in the highest gear setting. So what I did was marked the ground, turned it on for an hour, came back out, measured how far it had moved, did the maths, and it was gonna take around about eight hours to get from point A to point B. So if I turn this on at 6 a.m. when it's 17 degrees or whatever at that stage, that's fine. But by the time it gets to the other end of the track, it's gonna be about 2 p.m., 33, 34, 35 degrees. It's gonna be getting close to the top temperature of the day. And instead of getting water on it early in the morning, I'm not gonna be able to tick that box. In terms of width, like I was really impressed that I was gonna be able to get the width from that side to where the garden edging is gonna be over there to that garden bed slash fence over there. That was great. But the issues I had were going forward. Now the other thing in terms of wasting water over there is that if the sprinkler starts here, then it's gonna be getting water when it's here. It's still gonna be getting water when the tractor moves to here. It's still gonna be getting water when it moves to here. If you picture this exact patch of grass is gonna be getting water if the coverage is seven or eight, nine meters. When it's seven meters down there, it's still gonna be getting water. This is the part that I hope I'm gonna be able to make sense. But down here against this fence, it's gonna be getting water when I first turn it on. And then, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes later, it's not getting water anymore. So my middle section of the lawn was gonna be able to get a nice big deep water, but the outsides we're gonna get, you know, let's just say, for example, numbers sake, this section here might've got 20 minutes of water. This section here might've got 45 minutes of water. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. But in terms of coverage, I wasn't gonna be able to get even coverage. Now, something I also played around with a lot and what I thought of doing was just putting this smack bang in the center of my yard. If I could sit it there, I could put it in neutral so that it doesn't move and I could just use it as like a circular sprinkler in the middle, then perhaps I'd be able to get 80, 85% coverage, get a lot of the lawn watered, and then maybe do some hand watering around the outsides with a hose. Something like that was on the cards. What I found though was, Having them pointing straight up gets a lot of water out to the outside, not much water in the middle. If I, and I just, I really played around with this a lot between different configurations, setting them up so that this one was spraying really low in sort of an inner ring, this one was spraying really far, but to get an even coverage, I was going to have to play around with it a lot more and probably come out here a couple of times at least when I was using this sprinkler to, you know, maybe start in a setting where I was watering more of the outside then down to a setting where I was watering more of the inside. It was gonna be really difficult. It wasn't, you know, it was just gonna be a lot more manual and be a lot more difficult to me, as well as time consuming. You know, the fact that it was gonna take so far to travel and everything, that when I first learnt about these, I didn't know they existed until I was, until I was looking into what I was gonna do for this lawn and how I was gonna water it, how I was gonna set up the sprinklers that I already owned. And then I was looking around and I, I discovered these and I was like, wow, that looks sick. That is a, the coolest solution to my problem. It's gonna be, it's gonna work really well. Um, but yeah, I guess in terms of a review of this traveling sprinkler for me, you know, I do have pretty good water pressure at this house. I'm pretty happy with my water pressure, even with using connected hoses and multiple hoses at once and things like that. I do have pretty good pressure, so I can't really use that as an excuse. But for me, the way this works, the way it travels, and you know, it, it sort of makes it difficult to get an even amount of water, particularly on your outside sections and when you first start it without wasting lots of water. So yeah, to, for me, for my situation, my yard, um, these traveling sprinklers, probably not the greatest sort of solution, unfortunately. 
because like I said, I was excited about it. So there you go, that's what I do. That's how I'm watering my lawn at the moment in the absence of a Bluetooth irrigation system. Um, I've tried a few things and this is just what works to me to get the most coverage of water actually on the lawn. Yeah, like I said, a bit disappointing that that traveling sprinkler didn't work for me, but anyway, I'm glad that I finally recorded this video so now I can uh, go and get my money back for it because it's just been sitting in the shed for a bit. Yeah, it is obviously a super important part of lawn care, so it's a good thing to do. Go down to your hardware store or um, plumbing store or I don't know, whatever it is in your part of the world, in your area, have a look at the different options, maybe get a bit of a, ra um, a rough map of your yard, uh, look at different types of sprinklers and areas that they cover, think about whether you've got round edges, square edges, you've got a rectangular yard, a square yard, a really odd shaped yard. Um, in many cases to save water, you might have to just suck it up and, and use a hose at times to hand water some spots. But anyway, overall, hopefully some of that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video when my cylinder mole that I've sent off to get sharpened is back in action. I've hopefully got another application of fungicide out here to deal with the fungal disease. And even though it's not looking that bad, by my stand, it's not that great. So yeah, we'll keep working out here and keep getting things, don't say, in good nick. Get things looking good. See you in the next video.